Here I want to share with you a very smart piece of mathematics produced by a Swinburne student studying HMS 214, the matrix part of the course, around about 2011. Michael was a rather unusual student. He liked to solve problems his way, and very often he came up with quite unusual solutions that involved a lot of lateral thinking. This particular solution I had never seen before. In fact, it might well be that it is not generally known. It is, however, very elegant. Michael was presented with the problem of finding a matrix exponential, e to the power at, where a was a 2 by 2 matrix. I don't remember the specific matrix, but I've made one up here to demonstrate the example. t is a purely scalar parameter. This sort of problem is a standard fair sort of problem for a course on matrix theory involving eigenvalues, eigenvectors and the Cayley-Hamilton theorem. We normally teach it by way of finding the eigenvalues of A, invoking the Cayley-Hamilton theorem and then using the eigenvalues to find out the specific coefficients that must appear in the Cayley-Hamilton theorem to give this particular function of the matrix A. I think at the time he tried to solve this, Michael might not actually have read up much of that material. He certainly understood it later. But he came up with his own solution. He noticed that parameter t, e to the at, and it reminded him of an earlier course where he'd taken the Laplace transform of a function e to the at, where now, though, the a was just a scalar number. The Laplace transform of e to the at is 1 over s minus a. So Michael said, why can't I take the Laplace transform of this function, e to the power at, where a is the capital letter and a is the matrix? Well, if you just pretend that that can be done, you'd come up with an expression that looks like this, 1 over s minus capital A. The trouble is there are two problems here. On the bottom we have a scalar s and a matrix A mixed up. An expression needs to be one or the other. And also, we should remember that we're not really allowed to divide by a matrix. We can solve both of those problems. The problem of the mixed type is simply that we attach an unit matrix I2. That's the matrix 1, 0, 0, 1 next to the S. So it becomes S times I minus A. The problem of not dividing by a matrix is solved in the same way as we always do. We simply don't write it that way, but instead we talk about the matrix inverse. Hence, a better way to write this expression would be the following. Once we've solved those two little problems, we can now work out the inverse, and then take the inverse Laplace transform of what we get. It will actually give us the right answer. To take the inverse, I'm just going to remind you first of all what the matrix A was. So now I work out SI minus A. That's simple enough. Now we just have to collect that into a single matrix. Now we need to find its inverse. That means that we'll need to calculate the determinant first of all. It's just a quadratic expression in S. Now I can write down the inverse. It's 1 over the determinant. And then do you remember we swap the two terms on the leading diagonal, that's the s minus 1 and the s minus 3, and we change the signs of the other two terms, so that will change them to plus 2 and negative 1. Here's the inverse. That's all done, so now, do you remember that was the Laplace transform of e to the power at? So now, said Michael, all we have to do to find e to the to, to find e to the power at is to take the inverse Laplace transform of each of the four elements of this matrix. Admittedly, there's a fair amount of work involved, but you can do it, and it is really very elegant and effective. I'm going to take the Laplace transform of each term in turn. Let's start with the one containing s minus 3 on the top. In every case, we will need to do a completion of the square on the bottom. Once we see the completed square containing s minus 2, we know that there is a first shift theorem involved in the inverse Laplace transform, 
we'll have an e to the 2t in the answer. That also means that we need to write the top as a function of s minus 2 as follows. That gives us these two terms. We now take the inverse Laplace transform. The first one will be a cos of t with a shift by an amount 2. That means we have e to the 2t cos t. The other term is just a shifted version of the Laplace transform for sine. That means we will get minus e to the 2t sine t. So this answer is now just the 1, 1 component of e to the power a t. We do the others in a similar manner. Let's do the 2, 2 component, the one with s minus 1 in the numerator. Here's the split and now follows the inverse Laplace transform. And finally we need the off-diagonal terms. We can do both of those inverse Laplace transforms at once. The only difference between them is the presence of a 2 or a negative 1 in the numerator. I'll simply take the inverse transform with a 1 there instead and then multiply by either 2 or negative 1 as appropriate at the end. So there's the result for the inverse transform and now we're in a position to use all three of the black results to write down the actual matrix e to the power at. There are the two off-diagonal terms and the diagonal ones come from our first two calculations in black. That's the two inverse Laplace transforms shown here. They all have e to the 2t in. The first one has cos t minus sine t and the second one has cos t plus sine t. So there's our answer. And that answer furthermore can be verified either by doing the problem the conventional way using eigenvalues in the Cayley-Hamilton theorem or alternatively you can just ask for matrix exp using a program like Mathematica for example. I'll conclude there.